Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on Last Minute Maths. In this video, um, we're going to go through some basic uh, algebra, the laws of indices. And um, I say basic, but it is actually fundamental knowledge for higher levels of algebra, which become much more difficult if you don't know these rules. So the way I'm going to lay it out, I'll go through the rules first, then some worked examples, some more complicated examples. And at the end, It'll be a technique to show you what's the easiest way to work out more complex uh, questions. All right. So if perhaps you want to see that first, then feel free forward to the end of the video and then come back to the rules if you need to. OK, so let's uh, jump in. The indices is basically the power that you have of any number. So let's say A is a number and I have a to the power 5. That is your index, and it can be called power, root even, and order. So all of these words, right, depending on where you're learning your maths, etc., and what textbook you're using, they all mean the same thing. So also known as powers and roots, and even order. All right, so that's the index at the top there. Okay, the rules. All right. Um, I'm going to start with something really basic. And uh, just in case people sometimes get it wrong, especially in the junior years. If we have a times a, then that becomes a squared. So the power is 2. All right. Similarly, a times a times a is a cubed. Um, some of the junior students here do not do this. That does not equal 2a. That is a plus a. All right? Completely different. Do not get the, mix, the two of them mixed up. All right? Okay, that's just the basics, and let's move on. The actual laws of indices, then. If I have um, a number a to the power x, times a to the power y, then the result is a to the power x plus y. So you can see that there. You add the powers when you multiply. Now, the very important thing here to note, right, is the bases, i.e. a, equals the base, if you like. All right? They've got to be the same. Okay? If you have a to the x times b to the y, doesn't do anything. You can't combine, right? Whoops. Can't combine these. Because the bases, a and b, are different. Okay? Right, moving on a to the x divided by a to the y. In this one, you subtract subtract the powers. So the result of this is a to the power x minus y. All right, all of that. Next one, if you have a to the x, all right, and the whole thing, so brackets around it, the whole thing is taken to the power y, then the result is a to the power x times y. So multiply powers. Okay. Right. These next two are the ones that often catch people out. All right. So special attention to these two. a to the power minus x, whatever that x is. All right. It does not result in a negative number, okay? All it means is you are turning the number a upside down. You're putting 1 over the power, a to the power of x, all right? So I want to give a, an example of that separately. If I have, for example, 3 quarters to the power minus 1, that simply means flip it upside down. Okay, so 
a to the power minus x is 1 over a to the x. All right? It's not uh, making it negative. Negative number, all right? Okay, and then perhaps the one that is the most difficult to get uh, your head around, a to the power 1 over x, okay? This actually means the root, the x root of a, all right? And what does that mean? Um, I'm going to use a couple of examples here. So, for example, 125 to the power 1 third, it actually means cube root, okay? So, this thing here, all right? Cube root of 125 equals 5, because 5 to the power 3, so 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Um, I, I know maybe I'm going through some very basic things, but it's surprising how many students even in years 10, 11, etc., get these things wrong. So worth paying attention to this. All right, so the power one-third simply means cube root of, all right? And then we've got another one, 81 to the power one-quarter. It means the fourth root of 81. In English, plain English, what that means is what number... to the power 4 gives 81. That is effectively what it means, the fourth root of 81. In this case, 3, because 3 to the power 4 equals 81. All right, that's evident. Just one more, 32 to the power 1 fifth, All right, 1 over 5. So that's the fifth root of 32, and that is 2, because 2 to the power of 5 equals 32. You're welcome to dive in your calculators and uh, double-check these if you like, all right? The next thing in the type of questions that you're likely to get in your GCSE or, um, you know, grade 10, um, if you're in the States, for example, um, that level, the questions that you might get, the indices can be combined. So, you know, this example here, 8 to the power minus one-third. So, translating that into plain English, it means 1 over, right, the negative part of the power, the minus, means 1 over the cube root of 8, okay? So if I were to write that, it sort of looks like this. All right, with a cube there. Or I could have written it like this. Etc. All right. The result at the end of the day is a half. Okay, because the cube root of 8 is 2. Okay. Right. Some more complex examples now. Um, I say complex, but um, I'll just illustrate a couple of extra rules that uh, are so basic that people tend to actually forget them. Okay? So, for example, number one, p squared, all to the power half. So, using our rules from above, you multiply the powers. So, 2 times a half gives you p to the power 1. That is just p, right? So here's an additional rule. Any number to the power 1 is just itself. Nothing changes, right? And in addition to that, another one I'm going to write down. Any number to the power 0, it can be absolutely anything, to the power 0 equals 1. So those are the two rules that I was holding back to illustrate, right? Remember those. Okay, number two, 125, 125 to the power two-thirds, okay? I'm going to now split that fractional 
power into 125 to the power 1 third, and then all of it squared to the power 2. All right, so effectively you can split the fraction into 1 over 3, all right, the power that is 1 over 3, and then the 2 on the outside. Okay, cube root of 125, we've already seen, is 5. So that is the same as 5 squared, and therefore 25. All right, and another one, number 3, q to the power 6 divided by q to the power minus 6. Now here, you've got to watch out for the rule, okay? When you divide, you subtract the powers. But because the second one is already negative, so you put 6 minus the dividing power, which is minus 6. So minus minus 6 actually comes out to be 6 plus 6, all right? That is 6 plus 6. So q to the power 12, okay? Getting a little bit more creative now. Number 4 a to the power minus 5 divided by a to the power 6, all of it to the power minus 3, okay? The first thing we're going to do is take the a to the minus 5 and divide it by the power of a to the power uh, 6, and that becomes a to the power minus 5 minus 6, hence minus 11, all right? Then the whole thing to the power minus 3, okay? So minus 11, if you remember the rule, you multiply these powers. Minus 3 equals plus 33, hence my answer, a to the power 33. Now, here's one that's perhaps wouldn't look too pretty on a GCSE paper, but it can be done without really much fuss. Um, we have n to the power 5 and divided by 100, okay? What we're going to do is multiply independently the top and the bottom. When I say multiply, is multiply the powers. We know that when you have a number to a certain power, the whole thing raised to another power, you multiply the powers, all right? And you can do that top and bottom separately. So n to the 15 over 2, so that basically was 5 times 3 over 2, okay? And apply the 3 over 2 to the 100 separately, okay? So the top bit, n to the power 15 over 2, doesn't change. There's no nicer way of writing that. The bottom bit, however, we can actually apply the power 1 over 2, all right, as a square root of 10, all right? And... Oops, I've made a little mistake there, I think. Yep, I have, and I'm going to correct that straight away. And I apologize to you for having that mistake there to begin with. Um, one more. There we go. Yep, sorry about that. So, square root of 100 is 10. So, here we've got 10 cubed. All right? And so that ends up as a thousand, all right? And if you can follow that, so n to the power 15 over 2 divided by 1,000. We could actually leave it like that. That would be just as correct, all right? Um, depends on what the question says, all right? Sorry about the little hiccup in the middle, but hopefully that's been clarified. Right, the last bit that I said at the beginning of the video that I'm going to show is how to choose which one or which bit to deal with first when you have a question. And I want to show you this thing using this power here. Now I've got an example, 9 over 16 to the power minus 3 over 2. So I'm going to actually examine that power, the minus 3 over 2 here, all right? The minus bit means flip upside down. Okay, the 3 is cube, right? not cube root, it's cube. And then the, the denominator in the uh, power right, is effectively a half, if you like, and that means you square root.
One thing I perhaps should have mentioned earlier is that in square roots, we don't bother writing the two. That is assumed to be a square root. Any other root is given a number in the corner. All right. Okay, which way should we go with this one? The first one, this method here, so let's call that A, this one B, and that one C. All right. First thing I'm going to do is apply that square root. So I'm going to get rid of the two and square root the whole thing first. So I effectively get root 9 over root 16 to the power minus 3. So I'm getting rid of the square root first. And I end up with 3 over 4, right, as you can see there, to the power minus 3. Then I'm going to apply the minus, okay, which I've already said the minus bit just means flip it upside down, right? So then I get 4 over 3 to the power 3. So 4 thirds cubed, right? 4 cubed, 64, and 3 to the power 3, 27. So that is my answer there, all right? Now I'm going to take a, a nastier choice um, of the powers. If I take the same thing, first I apply the negative, you can see there, all right, get rid of that. So I'm flipping it upside down first, all right, and I get 16 over 9 to the power 3 over 2, okay? I could, if I wanted, apply the cube first. So cube the whole thing and then leave a square root as a last step, all right? Now, I didn't do this in my head on a calculator. 16 cubed apparently is 4096, and 9 cubed is 729, okay? If you take those and then apply the square root at the very end, it again comes up with exactly the same answer, 64 over 27, all right? And lastly, um, if I did it the other way around, uh, in terms of applying the negative first, okay? get rid of the negative first again. So I'm doing that, 16 over 9, same starting point, as you can see. But it's much easier, you know, if you use your sort of observations here and say, well, look, I know what the square root of 6 and 9 are. Apply that first. That's much easier. So you end up with 4 over 3 again and cubed, all right? And that also results in 64 over 27. So, you know, don't use this method. Don't use, like, really large powers and things. But you can see how A or C both give a fairly reasonable method and answer without any complications, like in a non-calculated paper. All right. So the choice of how you approach the powers, if you have to simplify one of these in a question or apply it to more complex algebra questions, then the order in which you do it, you know, it doesn't matter, but it can make a difference in terms of how much uh, actual calculating you have to do. All right. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, then please do leave it in the box below. And if you haven't subscribed and you found this at all um, of interest and use to you, then please do subscribe and watch out for uh, videos to come on GCSE and A-Level. Thanks for watching.